Welcome everyone to another video and in this video we are going to be taking a look at some tips for GBL season 3 and uh, once this, by the time this video is posted GBL season 3 should be have already started or uh, should be starting very shortly I posted on Twitter asking for some advice for people on how to improve their battling skills for GBL season 3 I got over a hundred responses from various members of the community, so very much appreciate everybody that posted there. I just pulled a couple of them. Um, there's obviously a lot of them, so I, I'm gonna include a link uh, either in the pin comment or a link in the description um, to to the thread. I'd rec definitely recommend you check it out. There's definitely a lot of really great tips from a lot of really great battlers from all calibers of skill and um, uh, battling strategy and tactics so let's go ahead and get started the first tip is learning your counts um, so these this comes from uh, the nut 93 a very elite battler and Brian I believe that's how you pronounce it and I think this is this is this is really important so you know I do a lot of coaching coaching people from people that hit rank 10 to people that are in like rank 9 or in lower rank 8 and I think one of the big differences between those that are in the higher ranks versus those in the lower ranks is that those in the higher ranks um, do count. Like, do, like, no, no, for example, that takes five bubbles to get to Dice Beam, six to a Play Rough, seven to a Hydro Pump. And the thing is that some people are naturally going to be better at recognizing the counts just because they have very good rhythm. They, or they've, gone out and are able to like memorize the, these numbers but i think at the end of the day you have to like consciously learn how to count and that's the only way you're going to be able to do it it's not something that you just magically know over time and just like consciously learn it and yeah there'll be some people that you'll see on twitter and they'll say like i don't really count i just get a feel for it and you know that works great for them and uh, I'm not saying that's not a strategy that they shouldn't be using. And obviously it works very well for them. But I think for, for the vast majority of people, uh, you'll have to like learn and visually, like visually or play with sound, learn how to count the fast moves and how much energy it takes. And that will help you better predict whether or not you're getting baited, right? Or if whether or not as the Pokemon's fainting, whether or not you're going to be able to farm them down uh, or whether or not they, they have enough energy uh, for the nuke that's actually going to hurt you or potentially to to sack swap so there's a lot of advantages to learning how to count and i think this season you need to make an effort to learn how to count and if it means that you lose a couple of games earlier in the season that you would have won not a big deal because in the long run that's going to allow you to improve your skills dra drastically so very good advice uh, by the nut and brian next one comes uh from for the battles, the piece of bread, problems, IRL, and coriander, 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 something like that. Yeah. Anyways, and it's basically the overall message is like, don't be discouraged. So for the battle makes a really good point that essentially through the MMR system, through the ELO system, despite its many flaws, its objective is basically to pair people, pair you up with people that have very similar skill levels, right? So if you beat them, if you beat the people that you're playing frequently, it'll move you up to the next skill level or next group of people that are supposedly higher skills or, or have won more battles. And eventually you're gonna be paired with people that can beat you for the most part, 50% of the time, and you beat them 50% of the time. And that means, like, if you flip a coin 10 times and you guess head heads all 10 times, that means you might get tails 10 times in a row. But that doesn't mean that you should be overly discouraged. Just, uh, you know, focus on improving the battles and don't get too frustrated. And uh, the piece of bread makes really good advice here. It says, uh, stop playing if you're so frustrated, because if you're really frustrated, then your chances of winning go down uh, dramatically. And then Coriander makes a really good point here saying like if you don't know if you should play another set, just play until you lose your next first game, then stop. I think that's really quality advice. You know, you should um, should enjoy while, while you're playing. And uh, Problem with IRL, never, ever get discharged from a bad set or session, right? Just leave it in the past, learn from it, but don't be overly discouraged. Don't let it dictate your... Uh, how you feel and I, I and I say this uh, regardless of the outcome so for example if you go you know 25 and 0 in your very first day in GBL 
don't get too hot on yourself. Don't get too be be happy, but don't get overly excited because if you get overly excited, the mo- the moment that you don't go twenty five and zero, or you go like twelve and thirteen, or ten and fifteen, then you're gonna feel really discouraged and feel like that you've fallen off or you've hit a wall or whatever it is. Just my advice um, is enjoy it, enjoy enjoy it for the most part, right? And have fun uh, and don't get too emotionally high or too emotionally low, and then you'll you'll feel a little bit better about when you do run into those uh really tough sets or sessions so uh really good advice from from these four the next one is be creative in disadvantageous or disadvantaged situations i guess i gotta word that a little bit better uh uh so lola game says don't switch it don't switch in your hard counter when you have a bad lead look lola sock lola socks sorry uh it says like understand the matchups even when shielding might be advantageous or not uh because there's chances that you can farm down and get that energy and then two butters makes a really good point is like having a strategy um a disadvantage disadvantage situation uh so i was watching he says i was watching a stream where a player led g fist into azu and struggled with that lead and then fp6 mentioned in the chat he likes to throw the earthquake then absorb the energy onto his own azu so the earthquake de- deals neutral damage to uh to azumarill from galarian stun fist and then absorbing the hydro pump into azumarill means that that 75 energy it was then um hidden to a pokemon that has really high bulk and then as well uh resist the hydro pump so the trade-off even though you technically lost the lead uh potentially could be enough to allow you to win win the game and obviously it's tough to win win games when you lose the lead but it's certainly possible and you want to be creative in finding your way to win the game that might be absorbing the charge move that might be like purposely losing the lead and farming down the next pokemon so you have energy that there might there's lots of way that might be baiting there's lots of ways to to play out a certain certain matchups and and you have to be as creative as you can to try to find that solution so thank you you three for uh providing those tips and advice the next one is uh take notes and record your battles uh, I, I i tried to pull more tweets but i couldn't find them exactly and a lot of them they were like grouped into previous tweets i've already covered uh but daniel says uh also if you don't if you don't want if you do want to get better write down your mistakes so you can eliminate them have a notebook that i i have a notebook that i use after each battle three months ago i didn't even know what azumarill was uh neither knew about its typings so they used to say that pvp was non-existent so in that case what he's done is he's taken notes understood how we can get better referring to the notes as he's gone through his battling career and that's allowed him to improve his knowledge from almost nothing about pvp to a very confident battler and then kevin uh, if you're frequent, if you're frequently on Twitter or on Twitch, uh, he is a um, uh, uh, great, experienced person in in both those fronts, and a really great person to follow on Twitter because he posts a lot of really great advice. And he says, record your battles for sure. Use them as a source of learnings on how you can play better, regardless if you win or lose. So I can't tell you how many times I've watched my own battles to get a sense of like where I went wrong where I could have improved and I think that's really important and I was coaching someone recently I'm like you have this like really bad habit of like throwing the fast move and throw instead of throwing the the charge move and if you go back and watch video you can clearly see when that's happening or you're taking too long to switch and you might not feel like if you're if you're not watching and recording watching your own battles you might feel like oh I'm switching out fast or I'm not throwing that fast move or I'm not hesitating or whatever but if you go back and watch it, you can see it for yourself and you can consciously improve on your skills and execution uh, because you've recognized uh, where you might be going wrong in your battles. So I think recording your battles, whether you win or lose them, is and going back and reviewing and taking notes and getting better is, is, uh, is a really great way to approach uh, your battling for Season 3. Energy management. As Limon Lime, you know, the la mega cup winner uh noted and uh we have sammy as well says manage your energy and then arrow says pick up your energy wherever you can uh so i think these are all really great points energy management can come in a lot of different ways so for example you'll see a lot of really top battlers uh before switching out they'll bank a charge move especially on a pokemon that has either 
a high attack stat or has a charge move that's going to be super effective to Pokemon in the back, that's always really helpful, right? Because, like, there's a couple reasons for that. One is you bank that charge move. As soon as you switch in that Pokemon, you can immediately fire off the charge move, which means that you might eliminate the energy uh, that your opponent has built up. Or you can, and Arrow's talking about picking up energy wherever you can. That may, and Arrow plays very in an unconventional game, as a lot of top battlers do. Uh, and that may mean, so for example, that might mean I've seen a strategy where you try to farm down a Pokemon and then you're going to go way past 100. A lot of times I've seen people go to 100 energy instead of throwing the charge move, they'll switch into another Pokemon and then finish the farm uh, down that way, especially if the Pokemon's super low, um, the opposing Pokemon's super low. That way they have a Pokemon with 100 energy. They didn't have to spend 45, 55, 60 energy uh, to take out their Pokemon, that, take out their opponent that had almost no health, or didn't have to take another charge move. So I think wherever you can, try to find and manage your energy appropriately, and then you'll find ways to to win the game. Or, for example, if you know, so here's another example. You know that um, uh, Registeel gets the Focus Blast before Galarian Sunfist, right? On the first one, so it takes seven and a half turns. Seven and a half seconds, I should say, to get to uh, the Focus Blast with uh, Registeel on the first one. And then it takes Galarian Stunfist eight turns or eight seconds to get to the first uh, uh, Earthquake. So if you throw the Earthquake right away, there's a chance that you might throw it into Atropius because they're going to switch out after the Focus Blast. So I think just understanding how you can not only manage your energy, but use it effectively is a, is a really great tip and I think uh, something that you should want to work on and understand. And as you're looking back on your battles, ask yourself, ask yourself, did you use your energy effectively? Was it wise to throw the charge move into to that Pokemon? Or were you better off banking it and hoping that you could use it into a Pokemon that is not going to resist it or has less bulk so it's going to be used more efficiently? So some really great tips here. The next last one, and I usually include this in all my tip videos because I think it's really important is have fun, right? I think this is super important. So Pogo Gotham says, uh, remember to have fun with your battles. You know, Jimma says, make sure you don't stress the first first month and a half or the first bit of the season. And you're supposed to, you're supposed to enjoy it. Um, you know, Terrax uh, says, breathe. And then uh, Turbo says, never battle emotionally. You know, we, we, we're supposed to be playing this game even if we're really intense about it or really casual about it, we're supposed to have fun with it, right? So if you lose a game, not a big deal. If you win a game, enjoy it, right? Regardless, at the end of the day, you're supposed to be doing something that you enjoy. And I think that's really important. And at the end of the set to say, like, you know, some really good games, regardless if you win or lose, and just make sure you come out of it having fun. And that means you won't be as frustrated. You won't be as, like, emotionally charged either way. And that will allow you to enjoy it and and uh, be able to play play out the marathon of the season. Because it's not just about any one single battle or one single set or one single session. There's going to be so many of them in the season. And, and there's going to be so many seasons that you eventually want to play that you should focus on getting better and having fun. So anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to like comment and subscribe and best of luck in season three and i look forward to helping you wherever i can i'm going to be going on live on twitch probably about four hours after this video goes up so um if you want to see me on twitch uh twitch.tv slash king iv and thank you everyone that contributed their tips here and i will see everyone in the next video